You know, the first time I saw whiteboards, I thought, this is remarkable. Why? All right, Robot in One Weekend 2017. We wanted to get a little bit deeper into the technology and how this robot actually works. So we're gonna go through and describe the components in detail so you can get an idea of what components you need to improve from what we've done. So let's start off with the drivetrain, Barry. We have a six wheel drivetrain. All six wheels are the Animark Stealth wheels and the gears themselves are the Rev Robotics Delrin plastic gears. The Animark motors that are driving it, we have four of them. They are the Never Rest Orbital 20s and the chassis is the Rev Robotics Extrusion 15 millimeter. Intake will drive. Open. Really important thing for you to understand is that this drivetrain is a hybrid. It's not just all one manufacturer. It's not all Tetris, it's not all Matrix, any of that kind of stuff. You can take all these components, use them. So you've got Rev, you've got Andy Mark, you've got custom laser cut pieces on here. You don't have to hold yourself into one manufacturer. You can get all these parts and everyone's designed them to work together. And that's what we wanted to show you here is that you're not just going to have to use one system on your robot. Moving up in the robot, let's look at the single axis arm. The whole arm is being driven by a Neverrest motor with a Neverrest Sport 256 to 1 gearbox. What's great about this gearbox is very robust and comes with a nub that's integrated. And to that, we bolted one of the Andy Mark Ninja sprockets. And that goes up to one of the Rev Delrin sprockets. So we've got a hybrid system once again using the two different components from the different manufacturers. And with that, the whole structure is a hybrid. Once again, we've got the brand new S3 rail from Andy Mark that we used for this substructure. And then the arm, We've got the Rev 15 millimeter rail that's giving us our whole structure. It's very strong, very lightweight, really easy to build and adjust. So at the end of our arm is a really simple gripper. We just took some of the Rev extrusion, put some surgical tubing on it, and then attached a Rev Robotics smart servo on it just to get the extrusion to be able to grip onto the blocks, the glyphs. Uh, and we have a piece of Lexan as a back that we're going to use. And the whole idea of the gripper is that it's going to go over the robot and score behind it. All right, since we made a super simple gripper like this, it is extremely important for us to be able to grab the glyphs in the same orientation every single time. So we added a grabber at the front of our robot that actually is on a hinge that we made that just makes it flop down and stays that way for the rest of the match. The hinge is connected to our uh, Rev Robotics Core Hex motor and then connected to the Animark compliant wheels. And we decided to use the four inch compliant wheel. And the reason that we did that is because it's extremely squishy and able to grab onto the glyphs and put them right inside the robot and able for our grabber to be able to grab it. So we knew one of the challenges of this game was getting on top of the balancing stone. It's a little high and with a four inch wheel, it's a little difficult to get up there. So we have a pretty simple solution where we just have a basic Lexan wedge that's strapped to another one of the Rev Smart servos that drops down on the back of the chassis, just enough to get us started and getting onto the balancing stone. Yeah, try to go in. Oh, I have no control in the that. face. I have no control over that. Did it glitch out? Yeah. Programmers! 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 The robot just like slammed into me. <laughs> he lost control of it. What you <laughs> decided to keep driving. What I just heard was you just lost control. <laughs> Here's the spear driving towards your crotch, everybody. <laughs> Program my engine. <AJ>. Okay. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> right next to that, you see our jewel detection arm. Again, simple little rev servo on a piece of rev uh, 15 millimeter rail. This arm just drops down and it actually has a color sensor on the end of it from Rev Robotics. Drops down, can sense the color, and then the robot decides to drive forward or back to remove the jewel of their choice. <laughs> Beat the crap out of that sensor. <laughs> I'm waiting for the case. Actually. You see the LEDs are flicking on and off? And there you go, it unplugged itself. <laughs> <laughs> we have another color sensor that we actually have in the gripper, and you might be saying, well, why do you have a, a sensor, color sensor in your gripper? Well, it's not just a color sensor. First off, in autonomous, let's say you grabbed one of these glyphs, you would actually be able to detect 
Am I holding a gray glyph or a brown glyph? So potentially to help you keep getting your pattern correctly, an autonomous, the robot would know that. Secondarily, this color sensor actually also works as a range finder. So if you're trying to get to the wall, it actually can help you do that range finding. Continuing on with some more of the sensors that we have on the robot, we have a Rev Robotics potentiometer uh, connected to our arm, so that way we can have some preset positions, so that way the driver doesn't have to control the arm to the positions every single time. Uh, we can just have him push a button and then, or her push a button every single time and drop the uh, glyph right where it needs to go. Go ahead. We didn't do it now. Oh, we didn't Stop. Right. Back down. Back down. And of course, the whole system is connected into the Rev Robotics electronics package. Uh, we've got two hubs on this machine and all the nice neat wiring that comes with it. We are lucky enough here to be at the Maker FX space, uh, which is a maker space here in Orlando, and they have lots of really great tools and things for us to use here. But I wanted to make something that any team could make right away. What tools do teams already have? So with just a couple of servos and some extrusion and just any metal that you happen to have, uh, you can really easily make a relic recoverer that looks like this. It's a very good probability that at some point during the match, while your manipulator, maybe your alliance is manipulating it, that it's going to fall over. So I think it's extremely important that whatever relic mechanism that you make, you need to be able to pick it up in the laying down position. But the next problem is then how do you get it from this position back to standing up on the other side of the wall? The furthest that you can have on the extrusion is 18 inches. So basically you are going to have to manipulate both the actuating of the extrusion as well as extending if you want to be able to go the full four feet. We're really looking at right now actually not using this because the envelope is a big problem uh, with the other mechanisms that we have. An integration with too many mechanisms is just extremely difficult to do. And we already decided that uh, recovering the relic is a low priority item. So if we can fit it into the robot, great. Not expecting to. All right, so that explains this robot. If you have any further questions in detail, feel free to post everything in the comments, and we're gonna be checking and trying to answer as many questions as we, as we can, because we know that many teams out there, uh, there are varying levels of how many mentors some teams do or don't have. So we are going to be your e-mentors. And if you have any questions, you wanna learn more about any of these products, uh, we've got the links down below in the description for the different products and the manufacturers that we've used on this robot. But with that, uh, that's all we got really for you this season as far as this machine goes. Maybe we'll do a video if you have some really specific questions. Video of a high five. Video of a high five. <laughs> With that, we'll see you next year.